the cup that contained the tea, contaminated. The seven bar staff at the hotel, who took the cup away, washed it, wiped it, set it out for other guests, contaminated. The pine bar itself, contaminated and still closed, two and a half months on. Safe and sound in Moscow, Lugovoy and Kovtun protested their innocence. We sat at the table and talked for 20 or 30 minutes. I'm completely certain, I'm 100% sure, that he didn't order anything and we didn't offer anything to him. But who might have ordered the assassination? Can the trail of polonium help us with that? So what about the Kremlin? They've got history. This is the Black Lubyanka, the headquarters of the old KGB. Thousands of ordinary people were executed in the basement. The story of Soviet poisoning goes back to the early 20s. This building here is laboratory number 12, the poison factory. The question is, is it still in business? with Charles Leaf was at some point he'll make a decision to kill that woman and child. As our SWAT team started moving up the stairs, they've got their weapons at the ready. A door burst open. Here comes Charles Leaf pushing his way out. He's got the rifle over the top of them, screaming at our agents, get back, get down, get down. I thought I was going to be dead. I thought that was definitely going to happen. When that crack goes off, there's no doubt what it is. I mean, it's not a floorboard cracking or something like that. It is a rifle. Your heart beats so much you can feel it in your throat. They were asking to see if everybody was all right, and he wouldn't let us make a noise. This scientific expedition is not the first. In 1953, renowned Russian geologist Viktor Tverdoklebov was surveying the area for minerals with a group of other scientists when he witnessed a huge animal in the water. Tverdoklebov died in 2006, but his daughter, Daria Leshinova, has the vivid report he published in a respected scientific journal. Just a little above the water, we saw a big, dark gray body. On the dark grey background, there were two clearly visible light symmetrical spots, similar to an animal's eyes. At first, it moved along the lake, then it moved towards us. Tverdoklebov and the other scientists panic and flee. When they turn around, the creature is retreating back towards the center of the lake. The object was floating quite fast. It was something alive, some kind of an animal. Welcome to Heavy Metal Production, Russian style. This is one of the world's biggest train factories. And these workers have just three days to make a monster locomotive. If they don't, the penalty is simple. They don't get paid. And if that wasn't bad enough, Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is about to inspect the factory. But fights are breaking out. Stop, stop, stop. Workers are being sent home. And lethal errors are stopping production. In just three days, can the Nevs factory pull off a train fit for a prime minister? This is life on the line in the wild, wild east. Welcome to Emirates Stadium home of Arsenal, one of the latest British institutions to attract the attention of a Russian oligarch. There is a battle going on for control of the club. In 2007, Arsenal was rocked when an elusive Russian billionaire bought a huge stake in the club. His name was Alicia Osmanov. 
we've come to Moscow to see if we can find further information about Ismanov's past. We met an investigator who spent six months trying to discover details about him. Dispatches has learned that she was hired by a company advising the Arsenal board. She'd been to the Uzbek capital, Tashkent, and tracked down one of Ozmanov's jailers. And only one machine in the world can get these colossal weights to the remote mountaintop locations. Its revolutionary coaxial rotor system was developed in top secret at the height of the Cold War. This ingenious invention makes the KA-32 the most agile chopper in the world. Crew, Commander Vasily Ischenko. The former army pilot has over 5,000 flying hours to his name. He's one of the most skilled chopper jockeys in Russia. Seven a.m. Today, Vasily's team has to install three avalanche cannons on Krasnaya Polyana's most remote peak, the Black Pyramid. On the journey back to the lab, his assistant sees flashing lights in the sky, and a craft swoops down, blocking the way. Group обнаружения, то появились, как говорится, неопознанный летающий объект. И они забрали сущностную основу. Прям по дороге. The mine is a kilometer deep. And it's dark, cold, and dangerous. The miner's first problem is extracting the nickel-rich ore from the sheer rock walls. Their solution is a water-cooled drill rig and a big bang. The rig bores a four-meter-long shaft into the rock. Then, they bring in the explosives. This is a Russian-made explosive called Gramatol. It's a mixture of fuel oil, saltpeter and TNT. Just three of these charges could blow a building to smithereens. As blast technician Evgeny Moiseev knows all too well. Well, there's always danger and everywhere. Evgeny and his team carefully insert the charges using a flexible boom. Then they get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> 